Hey everyone, Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill, and today I've got a friend, Larry Redman. He is a certified Mercury guy. Um, he works in customer service, uh, very good at uh, pretty much answering all my questions. Uh, he's helped a lot of us anglers out uh, more times than not. And uh, we're gonna go over some of the maintenance tips and some of the features here that we have on the Mercury Pro XS, the 300 horse here. Um, but it'll apply to all your motors. Uh, Larry? Hey, Troy. Come on in, buddy. Thanks How for coming doing? in. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, one of the, I guess, biggest questions that you get asked all the time is a couple different things. New motors, yep. um, you have a 10 hour break in period. Correct. And after that, does a customer need to change his oil after 10 hours? So, what I always do when a customer calls is I grab the owner's manual <laughs> that comes with every new engine. Whether you get a 9.9 kicker or you get the 300 or you get um, whatever, you're going to get an owner's manual. In your owner's manual, your maintenance schedule, your break-in period actually is all laid out in here. So um, after your initial break-in, and this is a big question, what do I do for break-in? Well, one, refer to your owner's manual. But two hours, first two hours, we'll tell people keep it under load, don't trim out your engine. And then after that, you want to vary your RPMs but you can go wide open throttle one minute every 10 minutes, but you just don't want to trim it. You want to load up that engine. The reason for that, you need to seat your rings. Yes. So. And biggest thing there too, guys, when you're breaking in a motor is do not stay at one RPM for more than a minute. Even if you're idling, just give a little bit of gas, come back. Give a little bit of gas, come back. Vary your RPMs as much as possible, and you're just gonna, you know, you're gonna give your life, uh, your engine a lot more life if you continue to vary your RPMs. Once you get past those 10 hours, run it like you stole it. Yep, the, the, the next eight hours, really, you can run the engine, you can trim it out, you can operate it like you normally would. All we just say at that time, just don't hold any one RPM for more than 10 minutes. And again, it's just going through that whole portion of it. And then after that, run it like you stole it. Sure. How does that work then with your kickers on the smaller motors? Kicker motors are gonna have the same identical break-in as the bigger motors, but again, it's a kicker motor, so we're really not running it at higher RPMs, right? But you still wanna try to follow that same break-in procedure. Because, I mean, I'm guilty of it, and I know a lot of guys right. are. When you get a kicker motor, typically you're using it for trolling. You're not actually using it to break it in. Right. You go fishing, you drop it down, you start it, and you troll for hours on yeah, end. Correct. It's super important, guys, to do the same thing that you're doing with your big motors is drop your motor down and run it for two hours. You know, vary the speed, forward and back, forward and back. Give it a little bit of gas. And, uh, you know, the nice thing with the kicker is you're always going to have that thing under load because you're pushing such a heavy boat with such a small motor. Uh, but make sure you follow that break-in period uh, the same way you would with one of your big motors. The other thing too with the kicker motors and with the small motors is they actually have a oil pressure light on them. So the biggest thing that you'll see is low oil pressure, right? Or high oil pressure. Your light will come on to indicate that you have an oil pressure issue. So that's the biggest thing that you'll see with that. And again, um, if you just run them like you normally would and go through that cycle, it just breaks them in just fine. Okay. Yep. Um, so when it comes time to doing maintenance, uh, oil changes. Yep. Um, you know, we'll just start there. It's very easy to do. Guys it can is. do it at, you know, you can do it at your house. Um, it takes very little time and Mercury has done a heck of a job uh, when it comes time to designing their motors. And with the redesign, uh, we can go up on top. We're gonna show you here exactly where to check your oil. And uh, it's important that you do do that as well. Yep. But as far as changing your oil, right down here is a little cert. Um, you got your drain and you're simply going to put a wrench on that, crack that. I like to use a tube to come out um, so you don't get a whole bunch of oil everywhere. Um, but you're just going to crack that, open up the top uh, fill, and she's going to come out. Once it's dry, go ahead, tighten that back up, and we'll fill it from the top. Biggest thing we'll see with this, don't. It, the oil will come out slow, right? And guys will get like, oh, it's taking a while. It does. Do not, do not back this out all the way. There's O-rings and bushings on the back side of this. Yes. And once you do that, then you'll get an oil leak. So again, don't back it out all the way. All you gotta do is just crack it open a little bit. Um, you know, maybe three quarters of a turn, one turn, and that'll give you plenty of, uh, of opening there for that oil to come out. And if you're looking for a tube, Half inch. Half inch tubing. Yep. There you go, half inch tubing. Uh, well, I'm gonna crawl up here and we'll just show guys how easy it is to uh, check your oil. 
So the biggest thing with checking your oil to properly do the oil is you'll tilt your engine up to the trailer position and you'll leave it sit for 15 minutes. The reason you want to do that is these, oil, these engines, their design down here is an oil sump. All your oil is housed in the sump. To properly check your oil, you need to drain the sump and get it into the head. All right, so when Mercury redesigned the Pro XS and went from that big Verado cowl, you'd have to pop that cowl off and get at your oil and check everything. They did a really nice job by creating an access port. And what's nice about this is it tells you everything you need to know. Your oil volume, you've got your dipstick right here, and you've got your fill right here as well. So everything is right in place, uh, tells you the oil type and uh, all the information you need. And then obviously if you need to take your cowl off, um, how these big cowls come off is you're going to press that button, lift that handle. I'll get this guy off of here yet. And it makes it super easy to take that thing on and off if you need to get down and check any of the other stuff. Um, but for the most part, the average guy, all you're going to have to do is get in for your oil and, uh, and make sure you check that regularly. All right, so one thing we have done with this engine that probably not a lot of guys will do because not everybody's going to pull their cowl is on the back of the engine, we actually have a sticker. On this sticker, it has all your maintenance for 100 hours and 300 hours as far as that goes. So a lot of guys will ask the question, when's my first maintenance, right? 100 hours. So dealers may tell you a 10 hour or a 20 hour, not a bad idea. Um, you can drain your oil, check for debris in there, see if there's any shavings from the milling process of the head um, that would get through there. Again, not required for warranty, but recommended. Sure, so I guess we've talked about the top part of the motor, um, but I know I did a video earlier on in the year. One of the biggest things guys forget to do and costs a ton of money is if you forget or you don't check your prop and see if there's any fishing line yep. down in your seals, you're gonna have water issues and then come winter time, if you don't check your lower unit oil, you're gonna have water that's gonna get in there, freeze, typically crack something, you know, it expands, and uh, then you're gonna have some major issues. So check for fishing line, um, but also just every year, it's so easy to just change your lower unit oil out and put fresh stuff in. And uh, that just gives you a peace of mind that you go into winter with no water in your lower unit and you've got fresh oil. So come next spring, all you typically got to do is put some fresh gas in, fire it up and uh, ready to go. Yeah. And it's pretty easy too, super easy. Um, 55 foot pounds torque spec on your prop nut. So that's pretty standard. But uh, when it comes to the oil too, the one thing with the anything, 75 horse and above, or if you're running a 60 horse command thrust with the bigger gear case, right? 90 weight oil in the lower unit. So 90 weight, or we used to call it high performance gear lube, right? But that'll be more than sufficient for what's there. If you really want to boost it up, like for your application where you're out on the water every day and you're constantly running, you can run the extreme, the racing gear lube. It's not going to hurt this engine one, one bit. Okay. How about oil, you know, everybody thinks that they have to run mercury oil in a mercury motor. Yep. I know there's a lot of guys that don't. I mean, what is the requirements for warranty? Can sure. guys switch oil manufacturers when they're doing their oil changes? My best advice, and this is a call on a daily basis, is pick an oil and stick with it. So mercury's stance from a warranty perspective is, is we always recommend mercury or quicksilver products. Quicksilver and mercury, even though they're branded differently, are identical products. Quicksilver side is retail. You get that at your Walmarts, your fleet farms, right? And the mercury products are typically handled by the mercury dealerships only. So um, the biggest thing with this is that we'll say, where we're here in Wisconsin, it's a colder climate. We like to run our boats from what? March February to, till yeah, yeah, December. <laughs> to December, right? So 10W30 for us because we're in a colder climate, colder water. That, that's a less vis viscous oil, right? And that's going to suit our environment better. Now, if I'm in Florida where it's hot and it's humid, can I run 25W40 in this engine? Absolutely. Now, when it comes to other manufacturers of oil, Mercury's official stance is this. If your lubricant that you use causes a failure, 
Mercury doesn't have to cover that failure under warranty. Have we ever seen that happen? No, but it is something just to keep in the back of your mind. Um, guys like Gary Parsons, Keith Cavias, they're sponsored by the, uh, Schneider Lucas Orders, or Schneider or something, something like, that. like yep. that. Yeah, they use a different, a different, totally different product. Or Lucas, Lucas is another one, right? Um, that we get a good, a uh, lot of questions on. Free, feel free as long as it meets our specifications, right? And it's a marine grade lubricant. You're fine. Perfect. Well, that's, I know a lot of questions I get asked to is what oil do I have to put in my boat? Yep. Um, and what's nice now is I know like in the old days you had to search and search and search for how much did it take? What kind did I need? Um, now pretty much every motor you, you pull a cowl, they're going to have a placard there that's going to tell you exactly what you need, uh, removes all the guesswork. It does. Um, it has everything laid out here. And if you even did and scan the QR cord that's on the back of your engine, it'll sure. take you to videos. Perfect. <laughs> How about the oil filter? Where are we going to find the oil filter on this guy? Uh, oil filter on this guy is going to be up here on this side. So oil filter is going to be on the starboard side of the engine up on the top. So going back, in order to get to the oil filter, you got to pull the cowl off. We just showed you how to do that. Yep. It's very easy to get at your oil filter. Um, have a rag there, you know, just to make sure that nothing drips down inside and uh, super easy to do. Biggest question too, can I do my own maintenance? 100%. Just make sure you log it in your owner's manual and keep a copy of your receipts. It doesn't Perfect. void your warranty. There you go. Guys, real, you know, basic, pretty easy stuff, um, but it's a lot of questions that Mercury gets with their customer service team, and uh, I'm glad Larry was here to answer some of those questions, and uh, hopefully we've answered some of yours as well. So, Larry, thanks again, man. Thank you. Um, I'm Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill. We'll catch you guys on the water.